I'm going to share with you a really positive, hopeful story of religious organisations being at the forefront of environmental advocacy in Australia. And so that is about their involvement in the movement to divest from fossil fuels. We're going to look at fossil fuel divestment and why it's important. We're going to look at what role religious organisations have played, and in Australia particularly. Uh, and then uh, what we, those of us who have been active in this space of advocacy, have learned. So firstly, about fossil fuel divestment and why it's important. To avoid the worst excesses of climate change, the vast majority of fossil fuel re reserves are going to have to remain untouched. So they need to remain in the ground and under the sea. But globally, fossil fuel reserves, they're worth trillions of dollars on the balance sheets of fossil fuel extraction corporations. And these corporations fully intend to exploit those fossil fuels. So divestment, the decision for investors to pull money out of fossil fuel corporations, it's a symbolic prophetic action which aims to bring public attention to the urgency of acting on climate change, the need to leave fossil fuels in the ground, and the immorality of profiting from climate change. If it's wrong to wreck the climate, then it's wrong to profit from that wreckage. And institutions that choose to divest from corporations that are extracting fossil fuels are saying that they're choosing not to, uh, not to profit, from the exploitation of coal, coal seam gas, um, oil and gas, fossil fuels. And so they want to put this into the public debate, into the public con consciousness. Divestment is one uh, campaign tactic, among others, uh, in the effort to address climate change. So what role have religious organisations played in the divestment movement? Well, the movement began in earnest internationally in about 2012, and it's been the fastest growing divestment movement in history. So there are now approximately $6 trillion worth of funds that are managed under some sort of divestment policy. And religious organisations have been a key part in that movement. So in Australia, they were among the first to divest. So particularly the New South Wales ACT Synod of the Uniting Church. The decision uh, of the Synod, which was made at the April 2013 Synod meeting, drew considerable national media attention, and it really helped to drive the divestment movement in this country. So there are now over 20 Australian religious organisations that have publicly pledged to divest from a range of different traditions. And internationally, the global Catholic climate movement has been taking uh, leadership in the Catholic Church and there are now 95 Catholic organisations that have committed to divest and that includes uh, various dioceses, some universities and Caritas Internationalis which is one of the largest welfare organisations in the world. And now Australian Catholic groups, they were part of the first global Catholic climate movement announcement of divestment commi commitments and actions. So a really uh, important role both in Australia and the movement in Australia and internationally, internationally as well in the global divestment movement. So what have we learned then as people active in this space? Um, so firstly, as advocates uh, who work to get our organisations to divest, we've learned about how, how we can drive those divestment decisions. So of course it's important to work um, closely with financial managers, but it's equally important to work with the key decision makers for whatever your religious group is. So, um, in my case, as part of the Uniting Church Synod of New South Wales and ACT, it was our 400 member strong council that made the decision uh, by consensus uh, while we were working with and talking with the financial managers along the way. It can take a lot of time and work to achieve a divestment commitment. Uh, and in our case, the, New the Uniting Church, although it was one of the earliest uh, announcements, it came on the back of 20 years of environmental resolutions and at least 10 years of advocacy on climate change. So it's important to encourage and learn from each other as we go on this journey. And there are networks that connect, uh, can help you connect with others, such as ARC, Australian Religious Response to Climate Change, 350.org, uh, Divest Invest is another. And there are resources that they have produced that can help you. The second really important thing that um, those of us working on religious religious divestment from, uh, from fossil fuels is that we can be really strategic in the broader environmental movement, the broader climate movement. Religious groups are not normally aligned with environmental causes and some people have actually described this as laggards bringing up the rear in the environmental uh, movement, late to the party, that sort of thing. 
but it's actually because we're not the usual suspects that we've been leaders in the divestment movement, putting questions around climate change and morality and profiting from fossil fuels squarely into the public consciousness and squarely into the public sphere. So it's been uh, a very inspiring action on our part. So it's important to do what we can to live lightly on the earth with respect for and love for the earth and to be part of structural changes that help our society to do that as a whole. But the question is, what are the really strategic opportunities in front of us? How can we really make an important difference in that journey?